hi, back home again from Orchid Society meeting. Just get home. Uh, I'm not empty handed <laughs> as suspected. Yeah, it was quite a long meeting and it contained a lot of different stuff, different topics and auction. My orchids <laughs> was put up to an auction really, um, our chairman's suggestion. So, well, why not? A little bit extra money for me or for the society. Yeah. And anyway, um, they liked it, but <laughs> I was surprised that they liked the Brassia Rex most of them all, uh, except for the Mossy Eye. And the other ones, the ones I fancied most, they didn't know anything about, so they just, hmm, one euro perhaps for a division on this Cattleya. Yeah, yeah, this look very great. <laughs> so that's what happens. It's never as expected. <laughs> Now anyway, I got a little bit more room, spare room, in my apartment now, and to fill up with some more lovely orchids for you and me to watch. And yeah, of course, I bet you all want to see the finished result on the reporting on the Rex. Of course you do. Here she is. The tiny, tiny little Rex. <clears throat> no, not really, as I say. I want to compare it to something. This one is my huge, huge size dendrobium. So look, it's just, yeah, it's even larger. So, well, maybe a bad comparison, but anyway, I just wanted to tell you that it's still a very, very huge plant. So there's a lot left. I divided it into five separate parts, divisions, and brought four. I think four of them to the society meeting and it's uh, yeah the same amounts left so and a good amount of new growth to the side new coming here a lot of new growth everywhere so the rex will be a good huge plant when this summer is done anyway i did get few orchids and i also won an orchid at the lottery yeah so Ah, yeah, we're gonna look at the orchid I want first. Uh, yeah, the guy who was lecturing, Bad Olson, the one with the greenhouse, the really nice greenhouse, was showing us pictures on a few orchids in bloom, recently in bloom, or uh, yeah, some time ago, I don't know, really. But uh, he's also growing bananas. He's got a huge banana tree inside his. Uh, porch shall we say and that one is growing down into the earth <laughs> so we had to dig some holes and put some pipelines with hot water or whatever we said uh electricity or yeah heating elements or whatever it's called um, i'm not sure but to get the temperature up a bit in the soil for in the earth down underneath the porch uh, yeah it's really difficult to explain but uh he dug a hole under his greenhouse. Yeah, that's that's the truth for the banana tree to be able to uh, grow roots even better. So, and it sometimes gets a little bit too chilly for its roots to uh, thrive, so to speak. Yeah, uh, this orchid, <laughs> this is the one I won at the lottery. It's the Dendrobium delicatum. A species from Queensland in uh, Australia. Yeah, it's related to the Kingianums. As you can see, the canes are similar looking as well as the leaves. But this one has got a little bit, uh, well, no, just the same kind of leaves. A little bit softer, perhaps, but uh, yeah. And I think I need to stake this little guy up. He seems a bit bubbly in here. It's a fresh bag of moss. But I don't believe that its roots are all that great. But we, well, we shall see. And this one also needs a good amount of light, drop in night and temperature to be able to bloom. So I bet this one is going to be a cake machine for me, <laughs> as my very old I was. So cake machine, cake is everywhere, no blooms. But uh, we shall see about this one. It's going to stay outside on my balcony this summer from May to September. Maybe we can shake some blooms out of this guy. That was one. And I also happened to get some Tillandsia 
Usnoides, I don't know how it's pronounced, but uh, but it's alive at least, and it's gonna be good in my soon to come, you know, cabinet. Yeah, needs a lot of humidity, but it was for free, so really happy with that. I've got, <laughs> yeah, the vendor August on social media. She <laughs> she told me that she was gonna get. The uh, Ionocidium. Ionocidium. Sometimes it says it's spelled Ionocidium. Ionocidium, I've heard and I've seen uh, <laughs> various interpretations on this one. Its name. But it's a cross between Oncidium type something. <laughs> and um, if I'm not remembering it wrong, I assume that the Gomesa Flexiosa was one of his parents, but I can be wrong. So I'm gonna make a pop-up so you can see his inheritance. But this one is a little, little guy. Five euro only. Fifty crowns. <laughs> it's the best price I've ever seen on one of those. This one should cost about 250 crowns. 25 euro. So. And it's potted up in live sphagnum moss. And it really, really needs this humidity. So it's gonna stay in this moss. And for that price, I just had to have a second one, in case of this one dying on me. And this one has also bloomed. You can see the old spike, spikes. <laughs> ah, same setup. Moisturized roots, really. Green, lovely roots. The roots always seems to be the problem with this particular variety. If it lacks roots, at the base, they won't be anymore, all right? It will die off eventually. But the fatter, the canis, the longer it will last. <laughs> That's my experience, and it will grow some new roots, aerial roots. And that means that it will either need to be mounted or stay in a really, really humid place. It's not enough to just spray it every once in a while. It can sometimes give the orchid the opposite effect, which means rottening and dying. I've seen that as well. So this is my third. No, I'm, not, I'm lying to you. This is number four, really. Three of those has died on me. So they are even more difficult to keep and to care for than Tulamni orchids. So two similar in size. New ones. Better be prepared. <laughs> and da da da. Well, well, I couldn't really leave this lovely one to chance, or shall we say, to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, they had a few more, but uh, yeah, also mounted with some live, uh, yeah, moss. Uh, some better roots down there. Some roots even up here. And I am thinking about putting this guy into a boss. A tall, slim boss, really. With some lacquer beads to the bottom or some rocks or lovely looking rocks, perhaps. More expensive ones. And some water to the bottom, of course. And maybe it will benefit it if I even dip the bottom part here of the live moss into the water, reservoir, so to speak. So here's the boss. Oh, I've been down to my basement grabbing this one. Oh, I hope it will fit. Yeah. It looks smaller than it really was. This Orchid bat, I believe that this is going to be perfect for it. Yay! <laughs> Shorten this hanger a bit. Where is it? Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Shorten this one a little bit. Just a little bit. Yay. Yeah. And some lacquer or just some plain water. It really doesn't matter. It's Mostly for looks. And maybe I've got an idea. 
these guys, they're not gonna make it. No, it could have been a good idea to put them inside two small net baskets like this. But the problem is, <laughs> well, maybe it's not a problem, really, if I get them out of the pots and put them inside this. And a little hanger to the side here and hang it over the brim of the, uh, the valves, so to speak. Might be a solution. No, they will stay in the lime moss. Well, <laughs> it's sometimes really difficult to decide what to do, but I'm sure we're gonna come up with a good idea. <laughs> the most important part is that they will receive enough humidity. So it took a while for me to decide what to do really with the guys, newcomers. But this is, yeah, it's embarrassing to really admit, but it's 19 days after the meeting. Yeah, I've been busy, never really had a, the perfect moment to upload love this video. But she's still in bloom, still looking lovely. And it's working, this method is really working. Just dipping a small part of the uh, live spag moss to the bottom part of the uh, mount and it's really really hydrating the whole lot all the way up here so mm -hmm. I just filled up the water <laughs> reservoir once uh, she's doing fine I think oh uh, yeah looks like it's got a yellow leaf back there but uh yeah nothing wrong with the orchid really looks plump the newest ones least so, and green roots, still alive. And what about the other two guys? Yeah, this is what I did to the poor two little thingies. But they really are blooming size ones. So, not so poor, not so small actually. But they are still sitting in their live spag moss, of course. <laughs> but I put them <laughs> in the most humid. Uh, setup I could ever come up with. So, <laughs> semi hydroponic outside white container holds and water to all the way up here. So, this one keeps the water reservoir and keeps them a bit hydrated. And every once in a while, I pour water with a watering can from above. Yeah, like regular semi hydroponic growing. Yeah, that's the best thing I could ever come up with but um yeah I bet these guys are gonna do better in my soon to come cultivation cabinet now all I need is a few strong guys to help me carry it and yeah that's the only thing missing and then the cabinet will be that be here in my apartment but anyway now I think we're done so Thank you guys so much for watching and talk to you soon. Take care guys. Bye bye.